Let us take a moment for stillness on this day of in between times. God of Good Friday, of stones at a tomb, of a future that seems blocked and a future that becomes open. Be with us in all that which is unfinished in our lives, all that which is uncertain for us, all that which is in suspense. Help us live with hope with the unfinished, the unfinishable, and that which is still not decided, trusting your grace and love. In Christ's name, amen. A poem from Wendell Berry, the farmer theologian. I owned a slope full of stones. Like buried pianos, they lay in the ground. What bond have I made with the earth, having worn myself against it? It is a fatal singing I have carried with me out of that day. The stones have given me music that figures for me their holes in the earth and for their long lying in them dark. They have taught me the weariness that loves the ground and I must prepare a fitting silence. What does it take to move a stone when it is an effort to till the untillable, creating a place where simple seed can drop, be covered and sprout and thrive? It takes muscle and sweat and blisters and tears. What does it take to move a stone when it is a day when no one will speak out of fear the silent will be moved to cry out the truth, heard and known and never forgotten. What does it take to move a stone when it is a day when all had given up, gone behind locked doors in grief, and two came to tend the dead, but there was no dead to tend. Only a gaping hole left only an empty tomb, only a weeping, weary silence broken by love, calling out our name, and we turn to greet him as if hearing it for the first time. And from Matthew 27. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered for it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there sitting opposite the tomb. The next day, that is, after the day of preparation, the, the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered before Pilate and said, Sir, we remember what that imposter said while he was still alive. After three days, I will rise again. Therefore, command that the tomb be made secure until the third day. Otherwise, his disciples may go and steal him away and tell the people he has been raised from the dead. And the last deception would be worse than the first. And Pilate said, you have a guard of soldiers. Go and make the tomb as secure as you can. And so they went with the guard and made the tomb secure by sealing the stone. Well, Holy 
Saturday is the day when nothing happens, when everything's in suspense. It's a day of waiting, a day of uncertainty. Some people have talked about the world we live in being a Good Friday world because of the violence of our world and the dashing of hope in our world. It may also be a Holy Saturday world, a Holy Saturday world in which we spend that long day just waiting for something to happen. I mean, I think that all of us in this room have lived with a Holy Saturday. You know, you think of it after a, a child or a parent, uh, a good friend has died and you're waiting in that interim period uh, until the memorial service or funeral. Or when you've gotten news of a serious illness for yourself or a child and you're waiting for some sort of treatment plan to emerge. Or when you're just waiting for whatever's next whatever is next and not quite certain what it will be. Or when you're waiting, as we have been doing for close to a year or longer actually, for some sort of respite from COVID, for some sort of wet respite. And, and all you can do sometimes is wait. It doesn't do you much good to go out to Miami Beach and party. That's just a short term solution. But we wait, and that's really the Holy Ex Saturday experience. But again, Holy Saturday reminds us that we have to sometimes live with what's unresolved. We have to live with what we're not certain about. And that we don't do well by just simply going to Easter and assuming everything is okay. Sure, we need that Easter bunny. We need that Easter bunny and that cannon of confetti. We need the, the dinner that we're going to prepare for tomorrow. And we've already been shopping, some of us like me, at six in the morning when the old people go. And, uh, you know, we, we need that. But there also is that in between that's just as important. And knowing that we're going to make it not certain of the future, we're, we're, we trust that we're going to make it uh, living with the questions, as Rilke said in his poem uh, to a young poet. And we can live with that in part with the uncertainty and lament because we believe that through it all, there is hope. Through it all, God is with us. Through it all, even though we can't get too quickly to Easter morning, it's not, Easter never denies any of the problems of life. So it's uh, important to remember that Easter never denies the problems of life, but it puts them in that larger perspective of God's love, God's care, and God's victory over all that is evil in our world. And that indeed Easter reminds us, even on this day, Holy Saturday, that deep down, as Julian of Norwich says, all will be well and all will be well, and all manner of thing will be well. Amen. Our closing poem is from Leon Enriquez called Holy Saturday. Taste that still voice in silence deep. Release old strains of hurts laid bare apt solemn poise in death's dream sleep. Notice odd gains in buried flare. Quest now embalmed in earth's moist cave. Urge grace to show a secret tell. In sorrow's psalm the martyred brave. Love thus must know lost grandeur spell. Hope awaits thus the touch of grace. Observe the wind that swirls sad chime light hollows dust upon his this face yes love unseen accords changed mime since surreal space in mystery attests a choice beyond glimpse plain touch beyond place time blooming free 
upon fixed poise lost seems in vain. Raise up again, wise love not lost. Descend not end that glimpse of light. Ask joy not slain to transcend cause. Yonder uptrend of brilliant light. These poems will be uh, on a little video that's for the church's consumption that I'll put on there just for you to hear again. But we go forth with that sense that there is an uptrend of brilliant light that the poet says, an uptrend of brilliant light amid all that is uncertain in our lives. That there is light, there is hope, that even though we may not be able to see into the tomb of the future or see into the, the way that is made for us very far, uh, we can see that the way will open up. Again, as my Quaker and African American friends would say, God makes a way where there is no way. And that's always what we need to recall in these moments of transition in our own lives. God makes a way where there is no way. So let us go to peace this Holy Saturday. And yes, enjoy. Yes, enjoy the sunlight. Yes, enjoy the confetti and the photos. Yes, enjoy the people we love and the companion animals we love. And yet remember, there's a bittersweetness even in the best of days, and we can trust this to God's care. Let us go in peace in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, the Creator, Redeemer, Sustainer, the one who is the mother of us all. Let's, let us go in peace. Amen. Thank you for being here today. Thank you, Bruce. It's a joy. God be with you all. See you tomorrow. Okay. We'll be at the beach at 7 a.m. and then at 10 o'clock. And so life will be good. Okay. Bye, dears. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.